Masichet Yoma, Daf 48. Uh, we're continuing with a series of questions posed by Raf Papa. Uh, and the questions are all dealing with uh, a comparison. Uh, some of them are about um, Kemitsa, and some of them are about ha Hafina, uh, which is the, um, the flower that we take with the Mincha offering uh, with one hand, or the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, for Yom Kippur with two hands that the, the Ketoret, that the Kohen Gadol takes. Um, so we're asking about <clears throat> some of the questions are on one, some are on the other, and some are on both. So we start with uh, the following question. papa da la chometz bedofne de mana mai. So we take uh, chometz, one handful of flour for a flour offering. Uh, usually you put it in a vessel on, on the bottom, like a you know, normal way you'd put something in a vessel. But if instead he takes the, foul, the, the flour and sticks it onto the side of the vessel, is that considered putting it in a vessel or not. This is one of the necessary steps of the meal offering, you know, taking it um, and then actually putting it in the vessel is what makes it holy. Uh, so, so is that, it just has to be in the airspace of the vessel and it doesn't matter if it's on the bottom or on the side, it's totally fine. That's one side. Or doesn't it need to be placed in a normal way, the way you usually put things in a vessel on the bottom. And if you didn't do that, then there's no placement in the vessel. Um, so this question is left unanswered. Next question. He's picking up on Rav Papa's previous question, just asking a little further. Um, what if you turn the vessel upside down <clears throat> and you put the um, and you put the flower on the bottom of the vessel, but it's upside down? You put it in a regular way, but the whole thing is turned upside down, so it's sticking to the bottom of the vessel and uh, in, in the air. Uh, so mahu. Is that okay? Do you need it to be in the airspace? And it's still in the airspace. So what if it's upside down? Or do you need placement in a normal way? Normal way, you use gravity and uh, put it on uh, in, inside the vessel on the bottom and not upside down. And so you don't have the normal way and therefore it's not considered placement and it does not then uh, uh, is not uh, the proper procedure. And this question is left unanswered. Next question, by the papa. Okay, now this is now with the ketoret, um, where the Kohen Gadol brings melokh of nav. So we know he has to fill up two hands, but the question is, is that the, the top of it, is it smoothed uh, over or is it overflowing, uh, heaping uh, two handfuls? Uh, that's the question. And so uh, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Abba says, I actually have an answer for this one because uh, we have this following statement. This is a braita that says when we say it shouldn't be totally smooth straight on top and not very overflowing, but rather full, you know, a little bit curved on top. That's the normal way you think of it when you bring a handful, um, uh, somewhat of a curve, but not too much. All right, good. At least we have an answer to one of the questions. Now, Tananatam, we have a Mishnah in Masechet Zevachim. Uh, that says, Nishpach Adam al Rispava Asafo Pasul. Minakli al Rispava Asafo Kasher. We'll bring this as an introduction to the next question. Uh, it's very going to be a very interesting one. So here's the halacha regarding an animal sacrifice. When you do the shechita and uh, the blood, the blood, the blood that first comes out uh, from the animal, um, that's the dam hanefesh. It's the blood that it's it's life force is coming out from with 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 that blood. Um, that's the blood that you need to collect. The coin needs to collect into a vessel, and uh, that's the Kabbalah. And then he has to take that vessel to the Mizbeach, that's Holacha, and he has to pour it on the Mizbeach, um, that's Zerika. So you have to do all of those four steps, and in that order, uh, that's in order to uh, for it to atone. That's necessary. Now here's the question: What if the kohen gadol, the kohen, uh, does shechita and there's they, they doesn't have the vessel ready just yet, or he misses and the squirts out on the floor, and so now the blood is on the floor. Are you allowed to collect the blood on the floor into a vessel and then take that vessel and, and walk it to the to the to the uh, mizbeach? The answer is pasul, no good. It has to go directly from the neck of the animal 
and, and you have to catch it into the vessel. However, if you already uh, received the blood directly from the Shechita place into the, into the bowl, and then as he's walking, it spills onto the floor, but he collects it back, that's okay, right? Because he did the Kabbalah, he received the blood directly from the, from the neck of the animal, and so that he Kabbalah is done. If it fell on the floor and picked it up after, then no, no, no harm done, and he can keep going. So that's what the Mishnah says. Question. Now, what's the source for it? Now we're going to quote the Sifra, the Midrash Tanaim on Sefer Vayikra, that includes not only the law, but also the derivation. A lot of times there's a parallel between the Mishnah and the Midrash Tanaim. They're presenting the same law. Mishnah just says the bottom line, and the Midrash will tell us where it comes from. So we have a Pasuk. This is regarding the Korban of a Kohen Gadol who makes a mistake. He brings a Chatat. And then with the chatat, it says, V'lakach midam hapar, he takes, literally we would translate, from some of the blood of the, uh, of the uh, bull that is the sacrifice, and he's going to bring it onto the Mizbeach. So what does this mean, midam hapar? Midam ha-nefesh, velo midam ha-or, velo midam ha So it says from the blood of the par, um, it means not just any, not all or any of the blood, but dam ha-nefesh, the, the blood that comes out, right after the Shechita, and not from the skin, meaning when you first start doing Shechita, it might bleed a little, that, not that blood, and not from blood that comes out after uh, the, uh, the animal is, uh, after the Shechita is finished, and then you're cutting up the animal, all, all the rest of the blood afterwards, that is not valid blood to be used uh, for um, the Korban, for the offering on the Mizbeach. Has to be that first blood. Okay, that's not relevant to us. The next part of the Braita is relevant. Midam hapad, dam mehapad ye kabelin. We're going to see in a second. We're reading it as if it's uh, as if it says instead of midam hapad, dam mehapad. Right? Uh, we're kind of moving the mem over. <clears throat> uh, they're not actually going to changing the word in the Torah, but they're reading it as if it says it like that. So this teaches that we have to take blood from the pad directly, right? You have to receive it directly into the bowl from the neck of the animal, and it can't fall on the floor first and then pick it up. Uh, so that's the source for it. Now, uh, before we can establish that we can read it this way with moving the letter over, we have to, we, we explain why we can't read this literally. That just means midam. Usually the mem is a limiting word and it says some of the blood, you know, not all of it. Why can't we read it to teach me that? Just all you need is a little bit of blood, not all of it. You can't read it like that because of another reason. midam apad. If you would say, means some of it, and not even if it's only a little bit, not all of it. The next pasu, two pasu came later, um, is another pasuk that says, you have to take all of the blood and pour it on the, on the foot of the Mizbeach. We get all the blood, doesn't mean all the blood in the body of the animal, but rather all the blood that comes out during the time of Shechita. Now this law is lichatechila, but the avad, if you didn't get every, uh, all of it, it's still okay. But nevertheless, you have a pasuk that says lichatechila, you have to try to get all of the blood. So it wouldn't make sense to have another pasuk that says some of the blood, right? Only a little bit of it. It says, no, we can't read mi dam hapad in, a, in the literal way. So therefore, so rather, this pasuk must be read as if it says blood from the pad, which means you have to receive it directly from the animal as it's slaughtered and not if, if it falls on the floor. And this method of reading is a method of, uh, of Midrash called Gorin. We take away a letter from one word, Umosifin, we add it to another word, and then Doshin, and then we explain it. Okay, it's a very creative type of, uh, of reading that's uh, difficult to explain according to Peshat, but um, in cases like this where the Peshat literal uh, meaning uh, is not is not is not applicable. So this is a way to make sense of those uh, some of those extra letters. Okay, now all that was an intro to the question. All that's established. We know regarding an animal, it can't fall on the floor when you first do shechita, but after you received it in the vessel and then it spills on the floor, that's okay. You could pick it up and still go ahead and put it on the mizbeach.
But now we're going to wonder how does that apply to ketoret? Ba'ed af papa. The Kohen uh, takes the, 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 the Ketoret, where Kohen Gadol takes the Ketoret um, in his handfuls. And then as he's, uh, as, uh, after he takes it, it falls on the floor. Um, and so then he goes and picks it up. Can he still use it? That's the question. So here's the two sides. Are his hands like the neck of an animal? In other words, is that the his hands are like the source uh, of the of where the where this uh, material is coming from, and therefore, uh, just like um, when it comes from the animal falls on the floor, it's no good. The blood, so too, if it comes from his hands and falls on the floor, then it's no good, right? Because it has to come directly from the source and from his hands. It would have to go. Um, Either directly onto the fire, or you know, we know, or he puts it into a, a ladle, um, and just to make it easier to walk there. Uh, that's one side, so it's 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 uh, it's no good, I and mean, it is like uh, like the neck of the animal. Or are his hands like a holy vessel? So just like with the blood, once it goes into the holy vessel. That's fine. You did Kabbalah. And after that, if it falls on the floor, you can pick it up. So too, his hands are, re- are the receiving, not the source. And so they're receiving like a holy vessel. And then he's transferring, he's moving it around, he's transferring it. And if in that case, it falls on the floor, he picks it up, it's okay, because it's already received in a holy vessel. That's the question regarding Ketodit. It's interesting that they don't ask the question uh, regarding the meal offering, because and the meal offering is actually, uh, we would have an answer. It's more of a one-to-one relationship because the, in the meal offering, taking the kemisa um, is, uh, is itself like, the, uh, like, like doing the shechita and kabbalah. And so, and because then after that, after you take the kemitzah, you're going to put it, he puts it into a bowl. In that case, you have to put it into a bowl. So it's clear that the kemitzah uh, there is like, is like the source. Uh, where you're getting it from, and so putting it in the bowl. Um, so if it falls on the floor at that point before you put it in the bowl, it would definitely be not good. But in the case of ketoret, you don't have to put it into a vessel, right? We saw yesterday he puts it into a into a vessel just to make it easier to carry. But technically, if he found some way of carrying everything, he wouldn't have to. And since he doesn't have to, therefore it's a possibility possibility to see his hands like a vessel themselves. Uh, conceptually, this is really fascinating uh, to think about a person's hands uh, being like a holy vessel. And um, you can think about the way that um, when we use our hands, our bodies, ourselves for a holy purpose, then in a way, uh, we ourselves become a holy vessel. So I think there's a, a nice philosophical lesson we can learn from this. But it, is it, you know, but I would think like it is like a vessel and not like a life force. You can live without your hands. Um, you can live with that. Yeah, but what, um, if you do have hands and are you are using them for, for a holy purpose, they become sanctified, right? They yes, sa- yes. They sanctify that, yeah. that which is in them, right? So okay. um, yeah, you, know, you can see that in Kohen Gadol's uh, dress, you know, with the, the way he dresses with, uh, uh, you know, very fancy way with the names of the, yes. of the Shiva team, right? Okay. He becomes a, a vessel um, the same way. Uh, when uh, the you know the Kohen Gadol gets oil poured on his head, just like the vessels do, right? So mm-hmm. um, you know, becoming holy, and I think that can apply not only to the Kohen Gadol, but to uh, any time we are, are using our hands uh, for um, for for good for good things. Um, okay, good. Um, uh, now, next question. Ketoret mahu. So chishev machshava is very interesting. When you're doing a regular korban, you have to have proper intention, right? The, the, and part of the intention is that you're going, if it's uh, something that you eat or whatever, that you're going to pro- use it, prepare it, eat it during the prop in the proper place and the proper time. Um, if you think, you know, I'm going to take this korban, I'm going to eat it in three days when you're not allowed to eat it, then, then even the thought of doing that makes the whole korban pasul. Okay, so we know that's true regarding animal sacrifices. Um, now the question is, how about ketoret? Cheshebachavinat ketoret mahu, miyam rinan yalef melo melo mimincha, o mahata mahanya bemachshava o lo. So not only animal sacrifices, ketoret, uh, sorry, mincha, off, mincha offerings, also you have to have proper thought when you're, when you're preparing them. 
So do we say the same thing? Yesterday we saw it says Meloch of Nav and also says the word Melo regarding Mincha. So should we learn a Gezer Ashava? And just like you have to have proper thought uh, regarding Mincha offering, so too Ketoret is the same thing. Or no, not necessarily. We don't learn it. That's the question. Uh, we don't compare it. Here's a, here's an attempted answer. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is um, uh, think, uh, is make a comparison between a few different things. Something that is consecrated, that's holy, like a, that's a korban, um, has a, a number of laws. One of them is what we just said. You have to have proper intention when you're bringing them. Another law is that they become more susceptible to tum'ah. Uh, such that if a tevul yom touches part of them, part of it, the whole thing becomes tamer. So let's explain, right? Um, uh, if you have a, a mound of like flour, um, and uh, let's say it's not holy, just regular flour, and a tevul yom, tevul yom, someone who became tamer during the day, he went to the mikveh already, so he's still a little bit tamer. Um, if tevul yom comes and touches that mound of just regular flour and not Kodesh flour. Uh, the law is that since he, each grain is an independent unit, he touched some of the grains. So then only that little bit becomes Tameh. You can scoop that out and, uh, and leave it. And the rest of it is fine. It doesn't transfer to all the rest. That's the regular law regarding regular food. However, if it's sanctified food, then it's more susceptible. And in that case, if he touches part of it, just being holy, being in a holy vessel in itself, um, makes it all into one unit and transfers through everything. So regarding that, Rabbi Akiba said, Kometz, Ketoret, the meal offering, the Ketoret offering, Lebona, the frankincense is brought on Shabbat with the 12 loaves, Gechalim, the coals that are brought to burn the Ketoret. All these things, if a tool yom touches part of it, then the whole thing becomes Pasul. Uh, the um, consequence of that is we see that all these things are considered consecrated. And Ketoret too. If they are considered consecrated, then the other law would also apply to them that if you have improper thought, when you're bringing the Ketoret and you say, I'm, I'm collecting this Ketoret to use tomorrow, that's no good. You can't do that. And that would be Pasul. So um, that's the derivation. And now we're going to explain the derivation and accept it. Kasaka da'atech, usually Kasaka da'atech is followed by Kamash Malan. We would have thought, but it's wrong. In this case, Kasatatech is, is correct. We, we are um, accepting it. So uh, the assumption of Rav of Shemi here, Barashe, is that since a Tevul Yom touches it, makes it Pasul, um, therefore, also, if you leave it over to the next day, that's also a disqualification because that's that's the rule for holy objects. And since leaving it over the next day is no good, then even having a thought of leaving it over for the next day is going to make it no good. And so it seems that uh, the answer to that Papa's question is, yes, in fact, we will derive um, uh, the comparison of Ketodit from Mincha and even the uh, negative, uh, a wrong thought uh, regarding the Chafina would make it Pasul. Next question, Okay, so I know you just established that while taking the ketorah, I have to have proper intention. What about when I go and take the coals with the, with the, with the shovel? Does that also require proper intention? What if I, when the Kohen is taking the coals, he says, I'm taking these coals for the ketorah that we're going to bring tomorrow, the next day. Right? Uh, does that, I mean, you, you can't use those coals for the next day, but does that thought make you make them unusable? Uh, so, what's the two sides? Machshire mitzvah, ke mitzvah damu, or law? The taking of the coals is no mitzvah specifically to get go get the coals. You just need the coals as a preparation, a prerequisite in order to burn the ketoret. So, machshire mitzvah, a preparation for mitzvah, is it like the mitzvah? Is it all part of the process or not? And if it is part of the process, then just you have to have proper intention. If you don't have proper intention, you can't use those coals or not. The preparation is less important and it's not really part of it. So you can think whatever you want during the preparation and then you can still use the coals. And we leave that question 
uh, open, the Rambam actually um, is uh, decides that Lacha, yes, that a Machshir Mitzvah is like a Mitzvah. And this is really also important conceptually, philosophically. A lot of times when you, you know, when you're doing something, a project or a good deed, uh, even more of the time is put in in just preparing for it, you know, getting getting to the place, putting things together, uh, logistics, and uh, the actual good deed is uh, a small part of it. Um, you know, like sitting in the sukkah, it only takes one, one minute to sit in the sukkah, eat a little bread. It's the, the preparation up for it uh, is what takes a long time and is the real effort. But all that is essential, um, according to this, is, a, is an essential part of the mitzvah itself. Um, so that's a, another beautiful idea that uh, I think we can derive from the details of these halachot. And last question, this is a very short daf because there's a lot of commentary on the page. The question was asked from Rav Sheshat. Um, when you're carrying the blood in a regular uh, sacrifice, um, uh, you're supposed to carry it in the right hand. The coin, the coin should carry the bowl in his right hand because everything's done with the right hand. What if he did it on the left hand? He carried it. Right? On holacha is an essential part of the uh, essential step. So is it okay or not? I have an answer. We learned it already in, the, in our Mishnah. Because he has to carry so many things that he brings in his right hand the coal, the shovel with the coals. And in his left hand, he's carrying the ketoret, right? And, um, you know, we just established that the ketoret is considered, uh, you know, uh, take, bringing the ketoret itself is, uh, uh, you know, is, is, is consecrated, has to be done properly. And it can be done with the left hand. So therefore, yes, the answer is just like you can carry the ketot with the left hand, so too you should be able to carry the, the, the blood with the left hand. You should do it with the right hand, if you do it with the left hand, it's okay. That's his answer. All right, we accept that answer, and we wonder why he didn't derive it from yet another place. Um, another Mishnah, it says, When the Kohanim, right, they would get a chance to carry the limbs of a uh, korban tamid uh, up the ramp, and so the kohen who gets uh, the, the the first uh, slot, he carries the the head of the animal and the the one of the hind legs, and so he carries it with two hands. The head is going to be more important, so he carries that with the right hand, and the leg he carries with the left hand. When he carries it, it just mentions that the skin part of it should be outside. The place where the cut is, where you see the flesh, should be inside because it's nicer when you're offering something to offer it in that way and not to have to see that part with the, with, with the flesh. Um, so, but that, the point for us is that you put, you carry, he's carrying one of the limbs in the left hand and carrying those limbs is uh, an important thing. So how come he doesn't derive the, the, from there that just like you can carry the limb with the left hand, so too you can carry blood with the left hand. And the answer is no, that is not a good proof. Because if from that second Mishnah, I would have thought, yeah, with the left hand, you can only use uh, when you're doing a, a something that is not, does not invalidate kapara, right? In other words, the bringing of the limbs are not absolutely necessary for the korban tamid. The main part of the korban tamid and any korban is the blood service, right? Take um, shechita, taking the blood, walking it, putting the blood on the mizbeach. The limbs, um, if you didn't do it, does not prevent it from, a, from atonement. And so therefore I might say only bring the limbs, which is less important, that you could do with the, le with the left hand. Um, but, uh, the, uh, but, but, but maybe the, with the something that is essential, like carrying the blood, which does require, uh, is required for kapara, maybe not. And so if I'd only had that mish the second Mishnah, I wouldn't necessarily know how to answer the question. So therefore, Rav Shashat brought our Mishnah that has to do with the, ketor with the Ketoret. And Ketoret certainly is an essential uh, part of the, of the Yom Kippur service um, that uh, achieves atonement. And therefore that has to be done properly. And if you could carry that with the left hand, then so too, blood you can carry with your left hand. All right, so we have a good answer for now. Uh, on the next staff, we will have further questions about this case. Uh, but we um, end for now.